Today, we're tying the ice pick. Hey everyone, Matt here with the Northern Angler in Traverse City, Michigan. You can find all the materials you'll need for this pattern and lots more at thenorthernangler.com. The ice pick comes to us from the vise of Rich Strollis and is a great bait fish imitation that you can adapt to lots of different fisheries. Personally, I've used this fly for trout, pike, bass, and even lake trout. By blending flash and natural materials, Rich has created a fly that is easy to customize and friendly to tie. Let's take a look at the materials we'll be using today. For the hook, we'll be using the A-Rex Aberdeen Predator. This wide gap hook is perfect for single hook streamers. For the thread, I like Vivas 140. This is a strong thread that won't build up too much bulk. The tail is strung marabou topped with a zonker strip. We'll pull that zonker strip over a sparkle minnow body brush to create a great two-toned effect. For the head, we'll use a fish skull bait fish head. These are easy to use and they just push on right over the eye of the hook. Once you've got your hook securely in the vise, start your thread up near the eye. Leave yourself a little bit of a gap. It's just going to make things a little bit easier working with those bait fish heads near the end. Work your thread back to the barb. There, you can trim off any excess. I'm going to grab a single marabou plume. And I've already stripped off all the stuff from the bottom. This just gets in the way. I'm going to measure one shank length. So I'm looking to measure between the bend and the eye. Hop that back. Give it a little pin trap there just to keep it on top of the shank. And then lift that stem. Give it a few wraps. That really helps things from rotating too much. All right, we're gonna work this mess down there. Work it back to the bend. And if this marabou starts to get a little unruly, just wet your fingers and work it into that marabou and it will tame it and keep it out of trouble. We're gonna grab our zonker piece here and I want the hide. This is how I measure this. The hide underneath, I want that to be back at the tips. See how it lines up there? Okay, once you've got that measurement, you need to expose the hide where you're going to tie it in. I generally like to use a bodkin. Once I find my spot, it just makes it very easy to get in there. I also wet my fingers at this point. Kind of saves your spot. Only have so many hands to work with here, right? Once you got that, put two, probably three good, strong wraps on top of that, then fold it back, put a few wraps in front, and I'm gonna place this just in my material clip to keep it from folding forward too fast here before we're ready. Next, we're gonna grab our body material. This is just the that MFC Sparkle Minnow Brush. You can also use the EP sparkle brush, but I think these are a little bit shorter and it lends itself really well to single hook pattern length. Just gonna expose a little bit of that wire, tie down on it and start working my thread up the shank. Now work your thread about two eye lengths back and then I usually put a half hitch just to kind of save my work, keeping it from coming undone. We're not using the rotary function here I'm just going to bring this up and I'm going to start combing back. I'm going to take nice open wraps and I'm working it back as I'm working up the shank. You don't want to make this too dense, otherwise you won't be able to, to penetrate the water much and you got to put these in front of fish. So less is a little bit more here. These brushes make it so much easier. The original pattern that Rich came out with used a dubbing loop and just, you know, the classic ice dub and it worked great, but man, it made a mess and it took a little bit, a little bit longer to put together. This is, this is very efficient. This is the quick, easy way to do things. You can definitely still work a, uh, a dubbing loop together with this and have it turn out great as well. 
Okay, I'm working back towards my thread there. And obviously this is the end of a brush, so I'm having to do a little bit more maximizing with my fingers here, working that around. Once you get there, put some nice secure wraps on top of that. Do not use your good scissors, that should be obvious. A lot of us just keep wire scissors or something at the desk for this. Here I take my thumbnail and work that wire piece down because too many times I've forgotten to do it and it just cuts right through my thread. Next I'm going to grab a brush. This is that hairline finger dubbing brush. Really makes this quick and easy. And I want to comb down on each side fairly even and expose the top shank because I want that rabbit strip to lay as flat as possible and not trap any flash fibers. Start to pull that forward. We're gonna stretch this just a little bit. And I start to work in there. I'm gonna grab my bodkin again, find that tie off spot, expose that, wet my fingers. I'm gonna put I'm wrapping here with my left hand because I don't want to lose the tension that my right hand is creating. I put three wraps there with a lot of tension, put some wraps in front, and then I go back again because this, this tie-off spot is going to be hidden. So it's not a huge deal if you, if you build up a little bit of thread here. We want this to be secure. Reach in with your scissors, trim that off and I come back to right where my thread meets the flash. And you can see I'm getting a nice taper from the flash to the marabou back to the rabbit. Looks good. Next you're going to grab some laser dub and you need to align these fibers. So what I'm doing here is is just pulling this bunch apart and aligning them. Otherwise you're going to end up with a big mess when you tie this in. This laser dub does two things. Number one, adds a little bit of vertical profile. That rabbit will lay down really flat. I want this to have a little bit more vertical profile to it. And secondly, it serves as a gap, something to kind of transition to this bait fish head. You can see here, there's a gap and I need to fill that. So we're gonna use this material and kind of just create something that that head can hold on to. All right, lay this down, and I'm wrapping right in the middle of this bundle. Can you see that? I'm gonna put two good wraps on that, rotate my vise. I grab my under color. Here I'm just using white to match that underbelly. This is that classic minnow color scheme, bait fish color scheme. It just, it works so well. You don't wanna to go too thick at a time with this stuff. You can always add more. It's tough to subtract. Lay that down, same idea. One, two, rotate back. I'll put a third on there just to call it good. Put a few wraps in front, fold those back. See how it's giving us that vertical profile? Then I just, I'm just coming in and checking every time I add some. Okay, it looks like we're gonna add one more bundle. That's still pretty loose in there. Grab some more for the green, and same process. We're just gonna add a little up top, and then a little on the bottom. Pull those apart, make sure they're getting aligned. One, two there, rotate, grab that under color. Get everything aligned. Set it down. Make sure it doesn't slide too far forward there. Try and keep them right on top. You don't want to add too much tension right away. And you can come in and check. And you want these to lay on top of the shank and right below it. You don't, <laughs> you don't want them to rotate just like that. 
That just means I didn't add enough thread tension. That's okay. Fold back. Grab your thread, wrap in front. Put a few wraps there. And this is coming together nicely. You could even finish this and just glue some eyes on there and it would look pretty good. But I want the weight of that bait fish head. And I'm going to work this back just a little bit. It slid down on me a little bit. I'm going to wrap on top of that. And then we're going to come in and check with our head. And that is starting to look really nice. That's exactly what we want. All right, I'm still going to work this back just a little bit more and put a few more wraps on top of this so it doesn't slide. Constantly checking, constantly checking that, that gap. Okay, jump forward. Here I'm just going to put a quick whip finish. I'm just using my fingers here because we're going to use little bit of super glue to, to secure this. Again, come in. You can see it fills that gap nicely, both the top and the bottom. And I really, really like gel super glue for this, not your regular Zappa gap. Gel is the way to go. It just fills gaps a lot better. So I'm going to come in and I'm putting this on those thread wraps all the way around. Don't go too crazy with it. And then be sure you can see here there's two sides of this head actually. There's a rounded underbelly. That's what we want down low. Bring in, push that back, brace your hook with your left hand and push and twist just a teeny bit with the right. That way you can make sure the whole eye of your hook is exposed so it won't be a big pain when you go to tie this streamer on. Work that back a little bit more. And I like to sneak just a few reps of thread. Here I just have red, it's just convenient. Right in front, kind of just to prevent it from sliding forward, a wedge if you will. Tie that off real quick. And that is essentially your fly. There's a few things to do just to clean things up and make it look a little bit more presentable. I like to comb that laser dub out. It works those two stacks we created together. Looking good, looking good. I'm gonna grab a Sharpie. I'm actually gonna add just a little bit of barring on top of this one. If you look at almost every little bait fish out there, they have some camouflage. They have a little bit of barring. So subtlety is the key here. We'll let that dry. That's looking pretty good. Last but certainly not least, we need to add some eyes. Now the easy way, I will tell you, I do this all the time, is just fill in those eye sockets with your Sharpie and just go with some dark circles. But let's glue some in there just so I can run you through the process. I'm gonna use that same gel super glue, just a dab of it. You gotta be really light handed with these. That's probably plenty, just so you can see how much that is there. Grab your eye. Really, really, I just set it there and that's it. I really, really, really try not to, not to stick my finger in the socket because you'll end up with super glue on your hands and that's never fun. I just grabbed the, the tool nearby, this little, my Bodkin Shepherd's hook. And I'm just working that in there. I'm gonna repeat the same process on the opposite side. Just one little dab of glue is really all you need. I used to always overdo these and end up with a giant mess. Set your eye close, like I said, don't touch it. Grab your tool, work it then into the socket. Work 
work that out and you can comb this out to your heart's content and play with all the color schemes you have in your head and get out and get fishing them. That's the ice pick. Now be sure to check out the materials list in the description below. As always, we also include some great background information about these flies, our favorite color schemes, and how we've found success with them on the water. Thanks so much for watching everyone. As always, we appreciate the support. If any of this information was helpful, think about hitting that thumbs up button. It's a big help for us. If you'd like to support this channel, be sure to check out thenorthernangler.com the next time you need materials or anything related to fly fishing. As always, don't forget to support your local fly shops. If you get a chance, leave us some comments down below. We're always happy to answer questions and hear about your experiences with these patterns. Get tying everyone. We hope to see you soon in the shop or out on the water.